all roads lead to San Francisco. Well, hot on the heels of the Ryzen launch is the Epic launch, second generation Epic. I'm here in San Francisco. AMD invited me. I came down. I did a live stream. It's pretty awesome. AMD is launching Epic. And I, launching, like, the first brilliant thing that AMD has done is that for the huge customers, that's Amazon and Microsoft and Twitter and Google and Dell and HP, they've already got Rome. They've had Rome for a while. This is, uh, this is really pretty br brilliant because we saw a lot of Intel's marketing with first gen Epic, you know, when they were going toe to toe, it's like, well, they don't have a proven track record. That was actually one of the things in Intel's marketing. But now AMD is saying, look, we're, we've proven ourselves. We are on track. Zen 3 is was mentioned in their live stream. Like Zen 3, the design is finished. So we are on track even for Zen 4. So this is signaling to people that are interested in AMD. It's like, hey, we're not just a one trick pony. We did first gen Epic. First gen Epic wins a lot of battles. Second gen Epic, they say, is ready for pretty much any data center battle. And that is pretty much true. There are really great benchmarks from Anantech, Serve the Home, and Pharonix. I'm gonna do some of my own testing, especially around PHP. They're running a number of virtual machines, some that have SEV enabled and some that don't. But then of course on the host machine or the rogue admin attack machine, I guess, they're running a terminal that's attempting to scrape information from memory. Information, sensitive information, things like social security numbers, address, that kind of thing. And of course with SEV, it's not going to find anything because the memory is encrypted. Azure and VDI, of course, is uh, also another demonstration that's here. They're packing in a lot of performance, obviously, but they've also got the AMD plus AMD solution for full VDI. It's a full-on Windows 10 virtual desktop. It's an MI25 type setup for graphics. It's also running in the new second gen Epic for compute. These CPUs will absolutely kick butt. Architecturally, they're very similar to Ryzen, but there have been some differences that I've noticed. One is the prefetcher. The prefetcher is not as aggressive on ROM as it is on desktop Ryzen, so it leaves more memory bandwidth available for different processors that are running on the CPU. So at the very top end of the stack, 64 cores, 128 threads, 225 watts as configurable TDP, so we'll say 225 slash 240. We're talking about, you know, uh, PCI Express 4 or not. So this demo is about encrypted memory, but it goes beyond encrypted memory. One of the new hardware features in, I guess you would call it Rome, Epic second generation, um, is that they move uh, more of the secure encrypted virtualization stuff to you know a higher level of functionality. So now you can run up to 509 virtual machines, each with its own private isolated key. This is a demo of VMware that's had all of the safeties disabled, even the safeties in the Linux kernel for being able to access the memory. So the demo on the left, the normal VM, they're looking for you know a hex code that they put in here. Uh, <laughs> Abe ate bad food, which is you know pretty fun. I would have you know maybe it was dead beef. I don't know, but uh, the situation here is that when you run the GNU debugger, you're able to get at the registers and you're able to get at the memory because you're running at the level of the hypervisor. Normally this is actually very hard to do in VMware, so the assumption here is that you've defeated all of the hardware and software protection that exists on a normal machine. So even if you defeat all of that, what if you also have secure encrypted virtualization on the new ROAM processors? Well, if you have, the only thing separating you between success and failure is SEV. SEV is going to defeat you. SEV is not only going to defeat you on the encrypted memory side of things, but also on the register side of things as well, because they're not able to, you're not able to dump the information from the registers in any kind of meaningful way, because all of it's encrypted, everything. It's a hardware feature, so the hardware is, is, uh, keeping all of that privileged information, even from somebody that's got full access to the hypervisor. World records, 80 world records broken and destroyed at this event. And some of them are on compute per power utilization. And when digging into exactly what configuration one, it's drop in. These CPUs are just dropping into the prior generation chassis. That means PCI Express 3 instead of PCI Express 4, which also means less 
power utilization because it's running at PCI Express 3 instead of PCI Express 4, and there's quite a bit of power difference between those. But still, that's mind blowing. It's like, look, we're using last year's chassis, not even optimized for the new CPU, and we're breaking all these world records for how fast things are. And the Java benchmarks, yes, these are the fastest CPUs on earth for Java. So if you're saddled with Java, well, there you go. Now the vSAN result here is interesting because VMware is usually a little touchy about benchmarking things, but they're using vSAN for this. That is true. We are using vSAN for this. There, there is a whole category of uh, vSAN results on the VMR publication, and, and this publication is live uh, and peer-reviewed and audited as well. So, 1.4 times the density of the competing platform, which is pretty good. Very good. <laughs> also, I want to point out the Epic 70. Uh, 402p this processor msrp is 1250 dollars 24 cores 48 threads 2.8 gigahertz based 3.35 gigahertz boost 128 megs of cache 180 watts good lord this cpu is going to completely take over the middle of the market this is the kind of cpu that like small and medium-sized businesses are buying and to just run their workloads. You know, it's like, we're gonna run a couple VMs in our database server. We might have a, you know, a VMR cluster of like two of these. And yeah, I mean, this is just utterly, utterly, uh, uh, just a completely insane, super disruptive CPU. The P means that it's not compatible with a dual socket system. So people that are working on density, people like, you know, Twitter, where they're like, we want a higher density, a higher data center density, they're still interested in two processor servers, but smaller and medium sized businesses, a one processor server is fine. They're not, you know, packing in as many machines as they possibly can in a data center. And that P is gonna cost a lot less. It's a way for AMD to segment the market, and they are. And the pricing up and down the stack here is disruptive. I mean, even the 64 core, it's priced at $69.50 compared to a 28 core processor that costs over $10,000. Now, Intel's got their new 56 core CPUs that you can't actually buy yet, but those are priced over $10,000. Epic for simulation, that's up to 72% faster, but that's sort of I don't want to say that's cherry pick. That's not really the right word, but the 8280 is the top of stack for Intel. The 7742 is the top of stack over here. And it's minutes faster on a several minute simulation. It's pretty nuts. And a single Epic 7742 for some workloads can outperform two Platinum 8280s from Intel. So that's completely, completely insane. Now for me, I wanna test AVX2 workloads. I wanna see how far above the base clock those AVX2 workloads are operating, especially on the higher core count parts. They showed a slide that showed that the 7742 was running at you know about three gigahertz, you know, even for 64 core workloads for whatever benchmark or for whatever test it was that they were doing. So it may be about managing thermals more than you know, power dissipation or anything like that. But at 225 watt, well, 225 slash 240, there's a CD, configurable TDP little asterisk there. And that means these CPUs are gonna perform a little different from chassis to chassis and depending on the density. So there's a lot of really cool stuff there. Now at the event with AMD, saw a Gigabyte and their new chassis and a lot of stuff. They've got a four node 2U server. You can pack in a ton of these. They got the little blades that'll hold one CPU, tons of memory, tons of IO saw 100 gig and 400 gig interfaces. Mellanox was there in full force, saw tons of PCI Express 4.0 accelerators, and the security, the security aspect. I mean, Intel does not have an answer for security features of Epic. These CPUs far and away have exactly what the doctor ordered from you know VMware and Amazon and Microsoft, you know, exactly what they need in terms of hardware security for customer workloads and you know potentially dangerous and virulent you know virtual machines that they might be running as part of customer workloads. The security features have been really beefed up on Rome. It's incredible. The, the uh, memory controller supports up to 509 encryption keys beyond the hypervisor in order to be able to encrypt virtual machines. It's completely patently just nuts. It's, it's utterly insane. Very excited for AMD. Very excited at the disruption that's going to take place here in the server market. It's going to drive prices down. No, even if you're like hardcore, you know, bleeding blue, 
you're gonna have better pricing because of this. You have AMD to thank for your better pricing. And that is a great, great thing when you are a customer. So nice job, well done, AMD. I can't wait to do more Linux testing. And I can't wait to work through some of the, uh, some of the teething issues here. But these CPUs right now today are doing real world workloads for Microsoft and VMware. But the really, the most brilliant thing here is that AMD preemptively and proactively has these CPUs in their biggest customers data centers already where they can say, look, the big boys are buying our CPUs. They're using our CPUs to do real workloads. What do you have to be afraid of? You're gonna save money. Your, C your servers are gonna run great. Your, these CPUs are gonna be awesome. What do you got to lose? And I've got to agree with that. That is a great way to present and market their product. If it's good enough for Twitter and Dell and HP and Microsoft and Amazon, what's well, good enough for you? I'm Wendell, this is level one. Can't wait to play with some more Epic. I'll see you in the forums.